what's up guys. Today I'll show you a horror thriller film, Sightless. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with Ellen in her apartment, feeling the space, and carefully walking towards the balcony. The sound of horns blares as she climbs, and then she lets go and dives into the air. Back to one month earlier before her suicide attempt, Ellen wakes up at a hospital, her eyes covered with bandages, and a bruise on the corner of her lips. Shortly after, the nurse who has been taking care of her, comes in and introduces himself and the place. Unavailable to receive a reply from Ellen, the nurse proceeds to carefully remove her eye bandages, and they reveal her eyes, covered with the color of red and bruises. Ellen reaches for the nurse's hands as she realizes that she cannot see anything. Hearing the fear evident in Ellen's voice, the nurse stands up and tells her that he will back after informing her doctor, knocking twice before leaving the room. Seconds later, the doctor tells Ellen that they have been trying to reach her brother, who works overseas, to inform him about her. The doctor flashes a flashlight to Ellen's eyes, attempting to amuse her. Then he delivers the devastating news of her going permanently blind, because of the chemicals her eyes were exposed to, causing Ellen to cry in agony. The next day, Detective Bryce interrogates Ellen about the incident, gathering information from her. Ellen vividly remembers how the attacker attacked when she walked towards her car, carrying her violin, which the police did not find. The detective thinks that because she was a well-known violinist, her fans might be the suspects. The detective immediately stops the interrogation, and leaves her with a piece of advice. Later that day, Ellen's brother informs her about her caregiver, and the place she will be staying. Clayton, her caregiver, talks to her brother as she listens to them. The morning after, the sound of horns wakes up Ellen. Suddenly, a knock on the door startles her, but she calms down when Clayton introduces himself. With her permission, Clayton comes in and starts to talk, comparing the place to the belt's story brightly, but Ellen cuts him off and asks about the apartment. Clayton quickly describes its parts and tries to lighten her mood by making a joke, but negativity ruins her mood. Feeling the change of atmosphere, Clayton prepares to leave, insisting that Ellen see him in the kitchen in 30 minutes for lunch. Ellen waits for a few minutes before going out of her room, her hands reaching for the kitchen table when Clayton's loud voice frightens her, so she scolds him for sneaking up on her before eating lunch. Before leaving, Clayton guides Ellen to memorize the place. That night after her frustrated attempt to reach Sasha, Ellen breathes heavily as the dream of the incident wakes her. Unable to go back to sleep, Ellen sits on her bed when liquid drops on her hand, scaring her. She fearfully touches her face with trembling hands, thinking she is crying blood, but it is just her imagination. The next day, Clayton brings a caged bird, hoping it might lighten Ellen's mood, but Ellen cannot appreciate its beauty because of her lack of sight. After naming the bird, Ellen instructs Clayton to follow her to the sliding door on the balcony. She opens the door and immediately, a strong wind comes in, but Ellen quickly shuts it off. She then proceeds to the window in front of the dining table, asking Clayton about the difference. Clayton coolly tells her that the window glass on the balcony is thinner than the one in the kitchen, and then informs her about Detective Bryce's voicemail. The voicemail contains the update about her case, which devastates Ellen because she was certain that her ex-husband's client attacked her that night. But the detective shares about the boot tread from the crime scene, a piece of evidence. Sensing Ellen's mood, Clayton assures her that no one would harm her with him. But Ellen quickly rejects his words, and proceeds to talk about her ex-husband. As they talk about her ex-husband, Ellen realizes that Clayton did his research on them, but she shrugs it off, and continues to talk about the people in her life, opening a bad memory. Clayton talks about how she was a well-known child prodigy, consolidating her, but Ellen yells at him, because she does not want to remember her past. Before leaving, Clayton leaves Ellen a cane to help her examine her surroundings, which she does while listening to loud classical music. Ellen struggles to sleep that night when she hears the front door opening, and footsteps are approaching her room. Ellen nervously goes out of bed, and reaches for the phone to dial the building's security. But unfortunately, no one answers the phone. The doorknob rattles as she calls Sasha, but the same thing happens. Gathering her strength, Ellen bravely goes out of her room, intently listening, but soon realizes that it is just her imagination again. She goes back to her bed, trying to sleep, but the water dripping disturbs her. After turning off the faucet in the bathroom, Ellen touches the bottles of pills in the sink, her mind in confusion whether to take it or not. Coming back to her senses, she puts down the bottle and leaves. Unable to sleep, she calls Clayton, but immediately drops the call as her pride overcomes her fear. Suddenly, a clunking startles her, followed by a woman sobbing. Ellen walks towards the vent where the sound is coming from, and listens to her neighbors arguing. 
The next day Ellen argues with Clayton about how the woman felt so real, but Clayton insists that it is just her other senses going into overdrive. Ellen then remembers that no one answered her phone call to the building's security, and tells Clayton about it. That afternoon, Ellen goes out of her room with a sticky note in her hand, hesitantly walking to the apartment next door, when she suddenly feels the wind gushing inside the apartment. She immediately goes back to her apartment, and opens the door on the balcony, and an intense wind bursts inside. Realizing something, Ellen goes out again and leaves the note. The next day, Ellen distractingly talks about her observation while Clayton teaches her how to use the laptop. Clayton looks at her weirdly, because her imagination seems a bit over, but then shrugs it off and continues to teach her. But Ellen refuses to learn. Following that, Clayton shares how his mother inspired him to help people like her. His mother was too ill to get out of bed, so she spent hours making bird cages, while Clayton and his sister would act out the stories they would make, making Ellen smile as Clayton comfortably shares it. Clayton then describes the scenes outside the apartment, when suddenly, Ellen asks to see his face, which Clayton grants by guiding her hand. Their faces inch away from each other when the elevator bell dings, interrupting their moment. Clayton awkwardly tries to excuse himself as he prepares to leave, but Ellen impartially listens to him. That night, Ellen frustratingly drinks as she listens to her brother's voicemail, when suddenly her neighbor rings the bell. Lena immediately introduces herself, and opens the conversation by bringing tea, but Ellen timidly informs Lana of her blindness. Inside, Lana roams her eyes to the apartment, commenting on the artwork and music, which confuses Ellen. Lana instantly changes the subject, and smokes inside, offending Ellen. Lana then unintentionally angers and confuses Ellen, by asking about her eyes. Realizing Ellen's suspicions, Lana panicky leaves, but Ellen holds her, shocked to feel her shaking, and hear her voice trembling. Then, Ellen touches Lana's face. Her scar frightening Ellen, but Lana firmly holds Ellen's arm, and quietly advises her not to trust anyone, and leaves. Ellen confusingly runs after Lana when they hear the elevator bell dings. A man, Lana's husband, is inside. Lana quickly goes back into her apartment, while Ellen scarily locks her door. Following that, Ellen calls Clayton to inform him about her encounter with Lana, and the fresh scar on her face, Ellen insisting that Lana's husband bruised Lana on purpose. However, Clayton defends Lana's husband, which frustrates Ellen, because Clayton believes in Lana's husband more than her. Out of frustration, Ellen calls Detective Bryce. The next day Ellen argues with Detective Bryce about Lana's case, but the detective reports that Lana had a history of self-harming. Unable to convince anyone, Ellen frustratingly ends the call, when suddenly she hears the car honking and its alarm blaring again. The same day, Ellen shares her observation about the sounds outside, happening simultaneously every day. After lighting the incense, Clayton gives the lighter to Ellen, confusing her as she does not own one, but soon realizes that it is Lana's. The next day, Ellen anxiously waits for the sounds to happen, which it does, concurrently with Clayton's arrival. Ellen shushes Clayton, and asks him to describe the scene outside, overly suspicious about it. But Clayton's words calm her, and Ellen takes his hand and puts it on top of her chest, putting a smile on Clayton's face. That night, vivid scenes of the attack play in her head. Lost in her thoughts, Ellen reaches for the pills on the sink, and tries to take some but soon stops herself. Unable to sleep, Ellen listens to her laptop as it tells her the search results of Lena's husband. When she hears the elevator bell ding, Ellen goes out and apologizes to Lena, but instead, the voice of Lena's husband terrifies Ellen. So she quickly backs up, sensing the action of Lena's husband when her laptop blurts out the search results. Ellen panicky shuts it down, forgetting to close her door, while Lana's husband stands outside, threatening her. After calling Clayton, Ellen informs him about the threat of Lana's husband, enraging Clayton. But Ellen stops him, and asks about his words on the phone call instead. Clayton tries to change the subject, but Ellen insists on her question, making Clayton confess his feelings to her. Shocked by the revelation, Ellen sighs heavily, and sips from her drink while Clayton continues to talk. Ellen cuts off Clayton, indirectly confessing her feelings to him, but when Clayton kisses her, Ellen breaks it. Because of her continuous wrong judgment on everything, Ellen doubts her feelings, and demands that she and Clayton start over professionally, which however, upsets Clayton. Later that night, while Ellen is frustrated because she cannot reach Sasha, she hears the front door opening, and goes out to apologize to Clayton. However, when she hears nothing, Ellen hesitantly backs up, thinking it might be Lena's husband, or the person who caused her blindness. Ellen quickly runs to her room, dials 911 while the attacker barges in and strangles her. Her head is weary, Ellen hears the siren wailing and the paramedic calling her. 
The paramedic ignorantly flashes a light to her, while telling her about her wrist wound. The pain in her neck from the strangulation catches the paramedic's attention, but he sees no mark, and lets Clayton in. Clayton immediately apologizes for leaving her when Ellen hugs him. Ellen thinks that it is the same man who attacked her that night. But Clayton dismisses her suspicion, and tells her that her constant drinking might be the cause of hallucinations. Hurt by Clayton's accusation, Ellen instructs him to call Detective Bryce. Later, Detective Bryce reports no sign of forced entry, thinking Clayton is the suspect. Ellen quickly cuts him off, offended by the detective's accusation, so Detective Bryce proceeds to update her about the case. The boot tread from the crime scene matches the shoe print they got from Sasha's property. The detective continues despite Ellen's reaction, it turns out, Sasha has a record for stalking and assaulting a co-worker's wife. Dumbfounded with the information, Ellen cannot speak, when she remembers the person attacking her the same night she went blind. Ellen persistently argues with Detective Bryce that someone did break into her apartment and harm her, but the detective is unconvinced. The detective reminds Ellen to thank Clayton for not putting her on suicide watch, and leaves. Ellen instructs Clayton to take the day off the morning after, lying to him about calling her brother. Ellen breaks down in front of her laptop, as she leaves an apology to her brother, Sasha, and Clayton. Ellen loses her will to live and walks towards the balcony, still crying, she sits on the edge and jumps into the air, attempting to end her life. Back to the present day after the suicide attempt, Ellen wakes up in a room, her head aching. She stands up to scan the room as she hears the noises outside. Ellen looks for the edge of her balcony with her trembling hands, gripping it as she climbs up. Panicking, Ellen goes out to use the elevator, but fails, so she goes back in, sobbing, realizing everything is a lie. Following that, Ellen finds the courage to go to Lana's apartment, when she bumps into her at the elevator. Surprisingly, Ellen sternly tells Lana that she left something in her apartment, and uses Lana's lighter to confess something to her. Down reaching the lighter, Ellen reveals her discovery of the place, and bombards Lana with questions. Ellen hopingly asks Lana how to get out, but Lana's husband interrupts them, and Lana hesitantly leaves Ellen behind, her wrist wound bleeding. Shortly after, Clayton comes in and sees the bleeding, accusing her of self-harming. Meanwhile, Ellen silently backs up as she suspects Clayton, disclosing her doubts to him. She confronts Clayton about the lies, while Clayton defends himself, trying to gain Ellen's trust. Ellen pretends to believe Clayton, but with a plan in her mind. Clayton shocks Ellen when he gives her the violin in the kitchen, but Ellen quickly hides it. Acting as if nothing happened, Clayton tries to kiss Ellen, but the oven beeping stops him. Before leaving, Clayton knocks on the table twice, making Ellen recall her memories. The nurse knocked twice as Clayton did before leaving her. Ellen's memories come to her all at once, and she realizes that everyone she met from the hospital to the apartment, is connected to Clayton. Hiding her suspicion, Ellen offers to make the drinks while Clayton sits, talking about the veldt, unaware of her plan. Then, Ellen purposely drops the cup, and asks Clayton to help her, while she quickly grabs the knife rack, and smacks him with it twice. Then Ellen steals Clayton's keys, and tries to open the elevator, but fails. So she goes back in to search Clayton's bag, where she finds a taser. Ellen keeps the taser and quickly goes out to open Lana's apartment. Inside Ellen sweeps her cane, and discovers a bunch of clothes Clayton used to deceive her. Suddenly she hears Lana whimpering, and runs after her while Clayton searches for her. Ellen finds Ellen Lana sitting on a hospital bed, and convinces her to escape together. However, Lana remains aloof, and reveals how Ellen saved her brother from the dark. Suddenly, the building alarm goes off, and Clayton's voice roars inside the apartment, scaring both of them. Determined to help Ellen, Lana reveals a secret way out, and commands her to leave without her. Ellen agitatedly walks back when she stumbles into Clayton, leaving her unconscious. Clayton drags Ellen into his control room, where he reveals his obsession with her. It's revealed that Clayton's mother was unwell throughout his childhood, and his father abused him often and forbade him to go out, leaving him nothing but his imagination. Luckily little Anna would sneak out, and let him listen to the soft music his mother played for them. That music is Ellen's. Her music saved Clayton from the abuse he experienced as a child. After his revelation, Ellen pretends to agree with Clayton's reason, controlling him, and when he turns his back on her, she immediately uses the taser on Clayton. Ellen hysterically opens the vent, looking for a way out, but instead finds a vial inside. Ellen searches for a way out when Clayton's grabs her hair and engages in a violent fight. Ellen struggles to free herself from Clayton's tight grip, when she unexpectedly spits the liquid from the vial to Clayton's eyes, leaving him sightless. 
Together with Lana, Ellen looks at Clayton, who is still obsessing about her. Following that, Ellen cries as Lana frees her. The movie ends with Ellen waiting to retake the stage six months after the incident, but still blind. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.